Today we're going to be starting a new unit on magnetism and static electricity. And over the course of the unit we'll do a lot of really cool demonstrations and activities with magnets with static electricity. We'll be looking at some properties of magnets. You'll be seeing how you can make your own magnets at home and testing the magnetic properties of other materials. But before we get into all of that it's important for us to understand what a magnet is. Now something I like to do in the classroom when we begin this unit are talk about things that maybe students believe or students have heard or students know to be true about magnets as we try to kind of describe what magnets are and what they do. Often students will make comments like magnets attract metal, magnets stick to things. And we're going to be looking at some of these and kind of evaluating are they always accurate or are they sometimes accurate because there's a lot of misconceptions that go with this study of magnetism that we're going to be looking at for the next few weeks. Now when we talk about forces in the universe you've got two major categories of forces and these are gravitational forces which is like Earth's gravity that attracts us towards the Earth and then you have electromagnetic forces. And the electromagnetic forces are what we'll be studying in this unit but these two types of forces have a lot of similarities. One of the comments that people will make very often about magnets is magnets will stick to metal or magnets will stick to other magnets. But think of it really not so much as sticking like you might stick something to some glue or to some tape where it's actually, you know, got a chemical on there that's adhering to it. That's not what's happening with a magnet. Think of a magnet attracting something more like our bodies being attracted to the earth by gravity. We are pulled towards the earth, we don't stick to the earth. And it's the same way with magnets. Magnets don't stick, magnets attract. They have this pulling force that they can exert on other types of objects. And we'll be looking at a lot of examples of this over the next few days and weeks. The other big misconception is, and we'll look at this a little bit more in detail later in the lesson, but another big misconception about magnets is magnets stick to metal. Uh, you know, we can take a magnet and put it on our metal refrigerator and it'll stay there. But the reality is, you know, magnets do attract certain types of metal, but they don't attract all types of metal. In fact, they don't even attract most types of metal. There's a very small class of metals, a small group of metals that will be attracted to magnets. Now I've got a list here of three general properties that all magnets have. We talk about characteristics of magnets, so that means that these three things will be true about every object that is a magnet. Over the next few lessons we'll be looking at all these characteristics individually in detail, but today I just want to kind of give you a little bit of an overview so you can identify magnets and so that you'll kind of have a better idea of what's coming up over the next few days. The first characteristic is that every magnet has to have a magnetic field. It has to produce its own magnetic field. And this is where that force of attraction, that pulling force, comes from. It comes from the magnet's magnetic field. And we'll be looking at how we can see magnetic fields and test the strength of magnetic fields in one of our lessons coming up soon. The second characteristic of all magnets is that these magnets will pull on or attract ferromagnetic materials. Notice I didn't say it attracts metal, it attracts ferromagnetic materials. And this is a very small group of metals. The most common ones are iron, nickel, and cobalt. And these are materials that will be attracted to magnets. And we'll look at ferromagnetic materials in a little bit more detail, and you've got a lab that you'll be doing with these here in a couple days. The third characteristic that you see here, though, is that magnets will attract or repel other magnets. And again, that force of attraction, that's that pulling force between a magnet and another object. And we'll look here a little bit later at how we can use this attraction and repulsion property of magnets to actually create motion in objects without touching the objects. I know this has been a very short lesson today, but I just wanted to give a little introduction to what magnets are, to some characteristics that all magnets have, and to some misconceptions that people often have about how magnets work and what they do. We'll be looking at all of this in a lot more detail over the next several lessons, and we'll have lots of labs and activities that will give us some really neat, interesting, and fun ways to explore these properties.